Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 8. This tutorial is going to be all about the mechanics for our gun. Real simple, it's going to be mainly coding but there is a lot to it which can be a little bit daunting for first timers here but don't worry, everything will be explained. So don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please feel free to support me on Patreon, where you get things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of the mechanics, we only want to be able to activate the mechanics when we've actually picked up this gun. So any mechanics we make is going to be attached directly to our handgun right here. So in dealing with that, we're also going to need to turn off the muzzle flash that we also have. So if we go to our handgun and then turn off muzzle flash up here, because we only want to activate that via the script. So speaking of scripts, let's go to our weapon script down here. And you'll notice we have that pickup that we did. So this one's going to be entirely new. So let's right click create C sharp script and we'll call this one handgun fire. So let's open that up in a visual studio. Now there's going to be a kind of a similarity between this and the door that we've done previously. So we're going to start this script a little bit, but then we're going to switch back to unity because there's something that we kind of need to make a note of. And that is referencing the input settings and the input settings are top and bottom what you use to make things happen within the game. It's pretty simple explanatory, it's easy stuff. So we have the script and we're going to start with a couple of variables and remember we don't need uh, any annotations, they can uh, go straight away. And we don't need void start either because everything is going to be done via a coroutine and inside void update. So let's start with public game object and we'll call it the gun. So this is the gun that we're holding in our hand. Second is going to be public game object and this will be the muzzle flash. So it'll be that object that we created with the light for the muzzle flash. That is its own separate object. The next thing we're going to have is going to be the sound. So the sound effects that we play when the gun fires. So public audio source and we'll call it gun fire semicolon. And the last variable that we're going to need is going to be a bool. That bool is going to determine whether we are firing our gun or not. So public bool, and remember capitalization is key here, has to be a lowercase b on the bool, and we'll call it is firing. By default we will make this equal to false. Now I spoke earlier about input settings. This is where we go, need to go and check what we're having as the input settings. What button is it going to be to fire our weapon? So let's head back to Unity. Let's go to edit, let's go down to project settings and click on input. You'll be presented over here in the inspector panel with just this axis. Click the arrow and you'll be presented with a multitude of input settings. The one we're going to use specifically is known as fire one. And if we click this arrow here next to fire one, we can see that we can use either left control or mouse zero. Mouse zero is the left mouse button. So theoretically, as long as we use this name, fire one, we can use either the left control on the keyboard or the left mouse button to fire our weapon when we put it in the code. And you can customize this if you want to. If you want to have, for example, why you'd want it, I don't know, but the L key as firing, what you would need to do is have the positive button as L. So whenever you press L, you'd be firing your weapon. But again, why you'd want to, I don't know, because it's not really standard. So keep that in mind, the name fire one, because we'll need that in a couple of seconds. So let's head back to our script and inside void update, we need to have an if statement to check if we are pressing either the left uh, mouse button or the left control key on the keyboard. So if and in brackets input dot get 
button down and in brackets and quotes the name of that button in which case for us it's going to be fire one it has to be spelled identical to the way it is in the input settings because we're referencing the input settings right here so we need to make sure it is the same so quote again close bracket close bracket and open curly bracket so if we go for example to our handgun pickup we had that just as a method void on trigger enter and if we go to our door opening script we just had a couple of different things inside that script which one open the door waited and then closed it so we're now dealing with an if statement and we're saying if this condition is true then execute the next line of code in this case it's going to be starting a coroutine and that coroutine is going to be what allows us to control the animation and sound of our gun firing so we need to have start coroutine as it is right here and open bracket and we can call this coroutine absolutely anything we want anything at all but it's probably wise to keep it reasonably named so i want to have it as firing handgun open close bracket close bracket semicolon now it will underline red because at the moment we haven't created that coroutine all we've got is just an if statement to say if this is true then do the following so incidentally if this statement isn't true this line of code will not be executed this line of code will not happen so therefore we will not run our coroutine the one we're about to write so let's write this coroutine now i enumerator and it's called firing handgun and again you can call this anything you want just as long as these two match up now I'm sure I said this in the, one of the previous tutorials, but yes, this is highlighted red. Yet again, that's because we've not used a specific line of code yet, but it'll all make sense in the end. So what do we do here? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to allow the script to recognize that we are firing the gun. So a good way of working this out is to say is firing equals true. And because of this statement, we're actually going to nest the previous if statement in a couple of moments time because realistically as it stands now because there is no nested if statement to say are we firing the weapon we could continuously fire this weapon and it would basically look ridiculous so we'll write this uh, coroutine and then we'll move on to that nested if statement so next thing we need to do is have the gun dot get component in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and open bracket and quotes and inside there we play the name of that animation that we created last time if you've forgotten what it was you can always go to your animations folder find it right here and copy the name so i've just pressed f2 there and i'm going to copy that animation name because what's going to happen here is the script is going to invoke this animation which is contained within the animator and it's going to make it play as we've stated right here so we're going to play the handgun fire animation quote close bracket semicolon at the same time we need our muzzle flash to appear on screen so we need that flash to happen so muzzle flash if i can spell muzzle flash dot set active and in brackets true so we turned it off earlier we're now setting it on so we can actually see it on the screen then let's play the audio sound so it's gun fire dot play open close bracket semicolon next thing we need to do is wait for just a fraction of a second and then turn off the muzzle flash so we're going to go yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets relatively small i'm going to have this just to test it out as 0.05 f obviously the f because it's a float close bracket semicolon after that period of time we can then turn off the muzzle flash muzzle flash dot set active and it's gonna be false semicolon 
After this, we're going to wait for just under half a second, because if I recall, our firing of the weapon lasts for... It's pretty quick, but I guess this determines whether you want to be a quick-firing weapon, a slow-firing weapon, but it, it, it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to test out um, a, a number here, see how it plays in-game, and then modify it if I need to. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds... And in brackets, let's have 0.45F. So basically we're waiting for half a second in this entire uh, animation sequence, which may be too long, but we'll soon see. After all is said and done, is firing equals false. So we can reset this whole thing, this whole process. So because we're doing that now, the nest if statement that I spoke about earlier we have to make sure that if we're pressing the, de the fire button right here, we then have to check if we are allowed to fire our weapon. So if is firing is equal false. So it would be if, and in brackets, is firing double equal to false, open curly bracket. And inside that curly bracket, we have to then put this start coroutine. So we can cut that out and place it in here and save the script. So to go over what is happening here, because it may look a little bit complicated, more complicated than you know anything we've dealt with before, we're checking every frame if we're pressing the fire button. If we are, we're then checking if we're allowed to play the animation and play the sound of that weapon firing. And if we are, then we start coroutine. So we start this whole process. So if we were to start this process and then try firing our, our weapon again instantly, we wouldn't be able to because is firing would become true, therefore preventing us from executing this line of code due to this if statement being incorrect. So next thing to do is let's bring in an audio file for the gun. So drag and drop this audio clip into Unity into the effects folder right here. And you can get this on the website, head over there, downloads and assets, Wolfenstein 3D clone, and tutorial number eight, you can get it there. So now we attach this to our first person controller inside the audio effects. And then let's duplicate this handgun pickup, hold control, press D. And I'm gonna F2 to rename handgun fire. And just drag and drop that pistol shot sound onto there. Make sure we've not ticked play on awake or loop or anything like that. Just pretty standard and it should be okay. So next thing we need to do is attach that script that we wrote, which is right here, onto our handgun right here. So I'm going to close that up, close audio up as well, just tidy everything up a bit. And handgun fire straight onto handgun. And we just need to attach those. Now realistically, um, you you know, we've put the variable here for the gun and it references itself. Uh, usually I like to have, you know, a separate object within the handgun. And I guess you could do that. That was my original intention, but I figured, you know, we'll just do it this way. Because there's no set way of doing some things in Unity. I guess it's just kind of personal preference. Uh, muzzle flash is right there. And finally, audio. And it's going to be handgun fire right there. And lastly, I'm going to turn off the handgun. Now, I'm going to press play. Let's go pick up our gun and let's try and fire it. So if I try doing this now, nothing will happen. We don't get any errors. The reason being is because the object the script is attached to, i.e. the handgun, is not active. Therefore, the script can't run. So if we go and pick up this gun now and fire, Okay, so it looks like there is a little bit of an error there. So from what I can see, it played the animation once, but then didn't want to play it again. Not quite sure why. So we could try a couple of different things here. Uh, let's actually turn the handgun straight on so we don't have to pick it up again. So let's have a bit of a debug session, see if we can... Have a, have a look. So let's fire the weapon. Yep. And it doesn't fire again. So 
Let's take a look at the animator, look at the handgun fire. Uh, we can see it here, that's fine. So let's take a look at the animation, handgun fire. Uh, if I take loop time and press play now, let's take a look what happens. So it repeatedly does that as we can see. That's absolutely insane. Uh, let's try to in loop pose as you can see. You can see it makes <laughs> seamless, but I don't think that's going to make too much of um, a difference here. So it is going to yeah do that. So I guess what we could do is let's try uh, playing new state instead. So it switches animation because I think it's going from one to the other. So what we could do is let's try a couple of different things. I've not actually tested this out yet for this particular project, but I'm going to place here uh, and have this known as new state and save. So presumably what will happen is it will attempt to play the animation known as new state and hopefully reset handgun fire. So let's give this a go. The joys of game development, guys. So fire. Okay, yep. So I've just realized now we still have loop right there. So that should actually fix the problems we have. We've uh, fixed our weapon, so we should be able to fire. And fire, 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 fire. Now you can see I'm clicking quite rapidly here, but we're only firing once every half a second. That's because of what we've set in our script. So if we go back to our script and let's change this to 0 0.25, resave, head back to Unity, press play, and we should be able to fire uh, a fifth of a second faster. Press play. There we go. Right, so let's give this a go. There we go. So I may keep it at that right there. So if you have any problems with the script, you can get it on the website as well, same as the audio file. And last thing I'm going to do is turn handgun off to make everything in perfect working order now. So, guys, next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we'll look at some ammo. So we're going to collect some ammo. Um, probably do some UI as well because you know we want to see on screen how much ammo we've got. So the main focus of UI is going to be all down the bottom here. Uh, so I don't think we'll do it all next tutorial, but we're certainly going to work towards it. And I think we probably need to build maybe some more world as well, I think. Um, yeah, and so guys, at this point, I think it's up to you to uh, work on your gun mechanics and perfect it. So guys, until next tutorial, Thank you very much for watching.